heard of me. Yeah, my name is Rip Van Finkel. Folks dwelling hereabout, and thereabout, all know my name, ought to live or yard. Tales of my many daring exploits have been told everywhere in these many parts. Folks been mighty interested in me since I came back from the mountains, far beyond the Tappan Zee, farther even than the farthest farmer's bowery he might pass by along the Hudson. Why, I remember once, one tall learned fellow came round here questioning the old burghers, came to me too, and, and asked, Rip upon the Winkle, is there anything or ever was that has befallen me that might interest the avid fanciers of true and authentical histories of the mighty Hudson Valley and the curious Dutch settlers of the province all around? The resulting tale I told was written down by Herr Knickerbocker, published Kvick, and read both near and far. I regret the old gentleman died shortly after the publication of his book, but now that he is dead and gone, it cannot do much harm to his memory to say that his time might have been much better employed in fatier matters. However, be that as it may, the resulting tales that were written down by Herr Knickerbocker were published then lost for a very long time. Then they were found again by that scavenging scalabag of an errant patriot, Washington Iving, who claimed them for his own. But I swear the story's mine. It always was. Always will be. And anyone who doubts my word should have a shrew for a wife and children who scamper willy-nilly upon his grave. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I mean, this wee fairy village was founded by the good Peter Stuyvesant a long time ago. God grant you may now rest in peace. Why then the men folk work from sun to sun, not like today, whilst the wee women folks toil below them elegant foothills of yon the mountains called the Catskills. Oh, Rick, he's a fine, jolly fellow. He's very helpful, my husband. Judith! Judith, take the thumb from out your nose and tend your brother. Judith, 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 thumb from nose, count his toes. This little piggy, that little piggy. You kids don't get your lousy ways from my side of the family. Oh, look at you, Rick Jr., just like your father. Lazing in the shade and snoring loud. Jeez, what does that <laughs> deserve this? Two offspring to tender and watch, and a no good, worthless husband who minds everybody's business but his own. Last week he tended the fences of his drinking crony, Brown Dutcher. Oh, oh fences need a mending too, Rick Van Winkle. And I'll bet that young widow kitchens are asking for help today too. Oh, wait till I get my hands on that founder, that tapless update of mine who makes me miserable. Instead of coming around here and helping me suffering, suffering in my wee fairy village here below the Catskills. Oh, I know he's a bounder, that was. Oh, what can I say? They call him a jolly old dog. Well, he's a jolly old dog, all right. And I'm the sad fishwife of that dog. I'm living here in this kennel with three curs for children who we always have playing in the gutter. Oh, Ding, then, Binkle, do my hearts deceive me. There you be, a sweep in the floor and a cook in me vittles. Come here and give your husband a sloppy kiss. Say hello to your husband, Dame Ben Binkle. Bill, Bill, Bill. That's a deep subject here, a fool slave. Junior's Rick Junior, pay your respects to your father. Remind him it be his fault that our home be so humble and lousy and low, such as it is. Stung to the kabik. But you be right, Dame Ben Binkle. Because God above only knows what our good home may be a coming to, but a looking and a judging from the lunch you've been giving me every day, and the rows that we've been having, I would say that the gutter is a good step upward, and the sewer and the kennel is a much healthier place to be. Oh, don't bring that mud in here, a dragon in dirt. Get him out of here. Oh, what is it worthless to you? Get that mud out of here. That is no mud. Ding, then, ding, oh, that is my pal Wolf you be a-talking about. Wolf, is it now? Scheiße! That <laughs> filthy, flea-bitten canine is more akin to a blind and play cake gopher than any self-respecting wolf. Uh, lower your ears, both, and don't listen. Both of you get out of here. What you been doing all day anyway? Here it is, the sun is high in the sky, and you haven't done a lick of work around here either. I know what you've been doing. You've been playing with the village kinders and up to no good, no doubt, Rip Van Winkle. Oh, yes, I have. I've been teaching them young'uns about the important things in life, how to be happy in this blame good bursting world. I'm doing what? Assisting in their sports, no doubt. That'll make them happy. Teaching them how to fly kites, yeah, romp and run. And then when they fall from weariness, they're going to take their naps. What have you been doing, Rick? You've been filling their heads with tall tales. Tales of hopes and bitches. Oh, and then you've been scaring the little ones half to death with stories of Indian scalping and pirates of walk in the plank. I've got me birthday, Van Dingo. I'll have you know I am an upstart member of this here community. Why, everyone around here in this village knows that I am the first and foremost man in any part of this county for husking Indian corn and the building stone fences. Oh, and the women folk of the village always, do you hear me? Always employ me, Rip Van Dingle, to run their little errands. Yes, they do. Oh, they do, do they? Oh, you dang fool, Rip. Uh, minding everybody's business but our own. Get that mud out of here. You idle, evil eyed vagabond cur out, I say. Oh, you get back in here. No, I'll, 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 ah, I'll hand that bone. Give me that bone. I spend every last kill with your hand. Now get it back me. Arr, snap, snap. Ah. <laughs> I can hand that feed you, will ya? Give me my broom. Where's my broom? It's wooden choppers you'll be eating with tomorrow. Listen, Wolf, you get back in here. Out with you, Ralph, with you. I'm fire, I in, out, in, out, in. I'll have you know, madam, that wherever that good dog goes, by so go I. Well, have it your own way, then, and both of you get out. I'll go by my own, my own way from now on. Then you go. Yes, I will. So, get thee out. Oh, well, Wolf, let us hide each again. You'll come to your senses soon enough, good madam. Come, let us go to the good inn. The humble Rubicon George III, named after our good king. <laughs> there we'll spend time with all the sages, philosophers, and other idlers of our village.
Derek Van Bommel! Derek Van Bommel! Que también tú. Come, let's discuss today's habit. Sit you down and have a, have a smirk, boys, and I'll tell you why I'm here. Come to join you once again. Both our mistress leads us a dog's life of it. But if ye can be true of this, just remember that old Rip will never leave you as long as he's alive. Bag your tail for the people, boys. That's it. Look wistfully in your master's face. This way, this way. Well, I'll stick by you. And he'll reciprocate with all his hairy heart, I'm sure. <laughs> from home again, but I don't mind, and I don't mind. I got my gun and my dog, and I ain't breaking any laws. I'm out a hunting once again for hares and squirrels and guinea hens. And though I can't go home tonight, I don't mind, I don't mind. Cause tomorrow I'll go hither, cause time's a healthy healer. And she'll take me back again, I know. New catches on my pants, she'll sew. She'll lecture me and scold. She'll give me gray hairs and make me old. On my head so far, but I don't mind, I don't mind. Set up, throw me on the door. Oh, vindictive. Oh, galore. But if they be I adore, because I don't mind, I don't mind. Be a funny duck like Abbott and Costello. Funny ducks and all like Gertrude Stein and Alice B. And then you'll have to pee as the girl. As funny is, as funny dolls, as like me were, and always was. So be ill, and soon she'll be up to the hills, my dog and me. I can chase from home again, but I don't mind, I don't mind. And if someday I'm old as Peter Van the Dunk, you know, up the road he lives, it smells like a skunk. It won't matter, I'll get by, I'll get out. Jane Pinkle's apple pie, who I've missed it already. I'll just smile and I'll get by, cause I don't mind. Fiery too, and we're both strange and strange to me. I've been chased from home again, but I don't mind, I don't mind. I'm out of hunting once again for hares and for girls and guinea hens. And though I can't go home tonight, I don't mind, I don't mind. Cause tomorrow I'll go hither, cause time that healthy healer and she'll take me home again. Oh, but I don't mind. I tell you both. Not your equal, that's true. 
I'm not her equal. I'm better than you are. I'm handsomer too. And I'll got me muscles. I'll go home and fix the vittles. Fluff that bed and give me a sloppy kiss before you go. That'll do it, fellas. I'll keep her in line. All right. The kettle's been on the fire long enough. They let me go. My stomach cries covered. And I doubt if I'm going to dally much longer for me, Kenger. How's that for being a salty tar? Oh, no, Kenger. How dare you talk to me like that? How dare you throw connubial bliss up into my face again? That bliss blustered up and blew shortly after our honeymoon in Hoboken. Run! Run! I'll teach you what it is to be a husband. Run! Run! Now well, they're off to the woods again, you know. <laughs> you poor excuse for an amorous Dutchman. Come back and you learn how to be nice to your wife, come on your kids, and you got gold in your pocket. <laughs>
Oh, stay away from that bottle. <laughs> I'm going to 
miracle, Mother Nature stays the same. It's true. Now, if you don't believe every word I've been telling you here tonight, may you have to go back to New Amsterdam to live, and may your hair turn the color of straw. Good night. <laughs>